So I was browsing the internet the other day and I came across a really interesting video. There's this Lego artist named Echo Nimako that only uses black Lego and he got me thinking. I almost never use black paracord and it's not for the reason you might instantly think of. I absolutely do not have anything against ninjas. That being said, could all black stealth mode paracord be a thing? And can I make a paracord bracelet that looks great in one single color? In particular, the shade of black. Let's find out. So as I was saying, there is a very technical reason why I don't use black for a majority of my projects. And it's simple. It just doesn't show up very well on camera. I have used dark colors in the past, of course, but black cord just isn't the most conducive for showing how a pattern is woven. We're doing this as a buckled bracelet today, and also on one of these really cool safety buckles using the Apache jig, two strand core for this bracelet, and I've got an assortment of black paracord for this one, which I'll explain why in a bit. The 550 cord will comprise the core strands and main weave, so we're going to set up our double cow's hitch core on the buckles. And as I was saying, visuals aside, but I think that has caused me to completely ignore the beauty that lies within the darkness of this shade. Don't get me wrong, I love wearing the shade of black because it's slimming, and also, I'm by no means a messy eater, but every single time I wear a white t-shirt, I inevitably get a stain on it. But anyhow, getting back to the whole blacked out paracord project thing, when you're working with a single color or shade, since we no longer have the contrast of color to show a pattern, what we're looking at is a completely different animal. And we're testing this out right now in front of your very eyes by bringing back a classic, Sanctified Endless Falls. And of course, in case you weren't aware, all the paracord and tools like the jig being used in this video are available at paracordweavers.com. And at the time of this video going up, we're very fittingly having our Black Friday deals on the site ready for you to check out. Links are in the description. But one thing you'll notice is that I'm using three, that's right, three different kinds of paracord to accomplish this. And by the way, if at any point this pattern is too confusing being done in all black, I have a full color tutorial for this on my channel, of course. You can check that out after. The 425 accent will be integrated at the very top going through the two cow hitches. Goes without saying, but make sure you have even cords on all sides for all cords. Then we're going to start our sanctified weave, which is pretty straightforward. And more about this project though. But now the reason why I've chosen to make the main weave out of 550 paracord and 425 paracord is mainly because when you look at the outer sheath of the cords, they are actually different. The 550 has an overall smoother, more uniform or finer looking weave. While the 425, however, has a more pronounced pattern in comparison. And of course, the 425 is slightly thinner than the 550. And as for the Endless Falls accent in the middle, I'm going with 275, which again, not only has a difference in the outer sheath, but of course it's much thinner. So I have an even bigger contrast in terms of the thickness compared to the two other cords. I wasn't sure exactly what to expect when working with a single color, but also a dark shade like black. Oh, and if you look here, we're going to incorporate the 275 by cow hitching it around the main weave strands. But as the pattern is forming in front of you, I think you can see why this is working. And it's because of the texture it's creating. Now, I don't know about you, but I think there is something really beautiful happening here. Much like the Lego sculptures of Echo Nimako, this kind of bracelet relies on texture. That being said, this of course is nowhere near as complex or as difficult as what he does but I feel there is a bit of a parallel. Without the discerning colors to illustrate the sanctified pattern, the differences in texture are what illustrate it. And I'll be honest, I think I kind of like it. As much as I love uniting my favorite paracord colors, there is a much more subtle and understated appreciation for something like this. This concept of the all black paracord bracelet also reminds me of the works of the late Pierre, I'm gonna butcher this, Soulage. I'm really sorry, sir, if I butchered your last name, but he was a French artist who would only work with black paint. And as you can see, his works do rely a lot on texture to create form. 
His paintings had no titles, only dates, and if he wasn't happy with one, he would actually burn it. Fascinating. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of abstract art, but it is interesting nonetheless. And also, Pierre lived to the ripe old age of 102, passing away only a couple of years ago. Getting back to this all-black project, though, it's the kind of bracelet where, at a glance or from far away, it looks kind of like a solid black bracelet. But as you get closer, and as you look more closely at it, you notice more. The beauty is when the light catches the bracelet from an angle or at the side, and the pattern is further revealed. The harder you look, the more you discover, and the more you're drawn in. Much like gazing into the abyss, and as you've probably heard, if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. Okay, maybe it's not that deep, but I think it's a pretty cool way of looking at it. And I don't know, maybe it's because winter's coming, the days are longer and darker. I hope I'm not falling into a dark mood. I don't think I am. No, you know what? I'm not. You know why? It's because of all of you watching. Now, I don't think I say this enough, but no matter how dark things can get, I'll always have YouTube. And you, the viewers watching, and I don't take that lightly. The fact that there are over 900,000 of you that are willing to watch some guy on the internet mess around with rope, it still boggles my mind to this day. Things haven't always been smooth sailing the past couple years, but I really can't complain when I kind of zoom out and look at my life from a bird's eye point of view. And honestly, that is all mainly because you've all given me a reason to keep going. So things have been progressing with the launch of the Paracord Weaver's store, and the response from you all has been great. But even so, it's gonna take a lot more work to ensure that the site works out in the long term and it's here to stay. And honestly, I'm not afraid of that work as I owe it to all of you because you've all decided to trust me to bring you the best Paracord content out there. So I hope I'm doing that. I also hope you guys don't mind these videos going beyond just tutorials anymore. I figure if I can give you all a little more value than what's just happening on screen, I feel like it benefits us both because I feel like I have a lot more to give beyond the surface level. I think it'd be great if we can continue to go beyond the bracelet. Ooh, that kind of sounds like it could be a docu-series or something. But well, it's definitely been a bit of a roller coaster these past couple of years. But to quote the late and great Bill Hicks, it's just a ride. People may come and go and situations may decline or improve, but as long as I have something I can continually apply myself to, and get better at like making YouTube videos about paracord, I think I'll be okay. So thank you guys for being my why. Now as for the bracelet, I like it. What do you think? 